Whakataka te ho ki te tuhu, whakataka te ho ki te tonga, ki a makina kina ki uta, ki a makaratana ki uta, e he a ki ana, e a kakura, he tio, he hoka, he hau, ti he maui. Uh, and I think particularly this is a, a, a beautiful um, karakia to uh, ground us in the importance of the day. Uh, and if you look at the English translation, um, particularly fitting um, for uh, today, with a touch of cloth, the sharp and dear and promise of a glorious day. Um, uh, great to be um, essentially starting to resume uh, meetings in person. In terms of apologies, uh, we have uh, Darren Linton, who is on leave, uh, Dr. Uh, Councillor Bill Cashmore and Councillor Darby. Uh, and uh, apart from that, we have got all of the board members uh, on, on screen or here present uh, and uh, in the, at the AT headquarters. So I think that's, yep, that's everyone. Um, if I can just make a couple of uh, comments um, in opening, I think last time I opened um, this meeting also in person, um, I was a couple of minutes late because I had just assisted um, somebody um, who had a very bad crash on their scooter on Viaduct um, Harbour Avenue um, outside of here and I hope that that, um, that man is okay. I had to come to this meeting but um, uh, I think he would have been, he'd be recovering and perhaps reflecting on why he came off. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> these things happen. Um, and uh, we all need to check our tyres. I think it would be the, the one message that I would um, have on that, that incident. Um, this, this morning I um, uh, drove for a park and ride at Constellation Drive and I was a little bit surprised at um, 7 a.m aim in the morning to find that the car park was only 25% full. Um, I had sort of hoped that that would be the case because I wanted to um, be in that part of town to do some chaining uh, type uh, trips after the AT board meeting. But it did sort of, I was quite surprised just how empty the park and ride is, bearing in mind how incredible the bus, the bus service is from Constellation Drive. I then got on the uh, bus at Constellation Drive and the bus had 12 people on it, all masked by the way. I was really impressed. There was no suggestion that people might just be uh, not masking. Nicely socially distanced with only 12 people on the bus. Uh, and if we were um, an airline at about 20 to 25% um, yield or load factor um, on, on that bus, um, we'd be pretty concerned about the revenue that we were missing. So we're currently uh, we're currently on an annualised basis basis with about 60 million uh, passenger buildings on our public transport um, system, and we have an SOI ask of getting to 82 million um, over this financial year. Uh, that is still um, 18 million short of where we got to pre-COVID. Uh, and there's a very big task ahead of us in terms of um, COVID recovery that the board does need to have a, a real focus on, which is how do we um, really sort of build this recovery um, even faster than the SOI target. That basically probably means um, over, because we have a very significant change in the way that people are accessing public transport, um, with changes from with working from home. Um, we do actually have a, you know, a, really, a really big task ahead of us. And from a uh, board perspective, we will be putting a lot of focus on how it is because week by week, we have to be building our patronage back. Uh, that's not just about efficiency of the whole transport system um, and helping with um, congestion management. It's actually um, really important in terms of what will be our targets coming out of the Transport Emission Reduction Plan um, or pathway that's currently being um, prepared um, by Auckland Council in collaboration with Auckland Transport. We've also got, just in terms of, it's not a perfect storm, but we've got some really big challenges because of 
COVID actually impacting our, um, our bus and other PT contractors, uh, meaning that services are actually being impacted. We've also got um, significant driver shortages and uh, shortages on our, our other PT systems. And you can see this um, with the buses, with every single bus that is now uh, not in service is also advertising um, for um, you know for jobs. Have we got jobs for you? There are some. So I think that um, we understand that there are some. There's some very significant uh, challenges in just actually operating a reliable public transport service because of the scale of cancellations. And this is in the uh, business report. Uh, we're at um, very significant levels of cancellation and uh, caused essentially by, um, by the ongoing waves of COVID and illness and driver shortages. And on the other hand, we've got a really big ask to start basically a really big recovery. The, um, the interesting um, observation is, the, is what has been the impact of the half price fares. And in, again, in the business report, it identifies that perhaps that might be three to four percent. So we've we've got to, you know, that there's a very, very big piece of thinking uh, that I know the executive have been doing um, to really start to think how do we reposition what is essentially most of the time a fantastically well performing, highly connected public transport system that goes to those awesome places, including also the places that you need to go from your home, from your place of work, from your school, from your university. Um, and uh, there's a whole range of uh, fantastic fair products to actually support that. So um, I just wanted to make it uh, plain, I think from the conversations I've been having with the board that from a practical sense, we see this as one of our biggest tactical um, issues right in front of us which is the recovery of the public transport system. Um, and we need to think significantly more creatively. Um, and I'm not saying we don't have those, um, those um, capacities uh, and we don't have um, that way of thinking um, at, at AT, but I think we've, we've really got um, um, a broader permission that you will be getting from the board. And it has been very well assisted um, by government initiatives such as the half price pet fares. And we know that the community services card uh, proposal for half price fares for all community service card holders um, is coming um, too in the very near future. The other uh, point I just wanted to um, call out was um, the incident at Sylvia Park uh, where a train manager um, was um, uh, allegedly physically attacked. Well, he was physically attacked, but I won't go into um, all the incidents there. What I wanted to particularly um, call out was, and, and I've been a bit surprised the media haven't picked this up, um, just um, trying to understand how it was that those uh, people were so, the train manager and train driver and the train control were so um, thoughtful about about um, first of all the welfare of that person, but actually the welfare of passengers, that they were able to redirect the train to a hospital. And before that person who was injured went to the emergency department, um, clear the train and make sure the passengers were okay. Now, we haven't we haven't really seen um, much um, about that, uh, but I, I was really taken um, by the actual concern that the, the train manager took um, to make sure the passengers were okay before he looked after his own welfare um, and was assisted through the Middlemore Emergency Department. Um, there's a story to be told there, um, and I, uh, I just want to acknowledge that um, that person and the team around him. Uh, so with those opening comments, we'll get on to um, uh, first of all, are there any late items for general business? Okay, uh, let's now move on to the interest register. Uh, there's a full disclosure there of interests. Are there any matters uh, that anyone wants to add? 
uh, and uh, are there any matters on today's agenda that somebody wants to declare a director an interest in? Just the Eastern Busway again. Okay, and you will not partake in that discussion? No. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, um, let's move on now to um, the uh, minutes of the meeting of the 26th of May. Are there any amendments to those minutes? They can be accepted as the true and correct record of that meeting. Miley, yes. Mark, thank you. Um, moving to the action register. Everything's got a date on it. Uh, safety governance. Can you make us become a general safety? Yes. We presented a paper in terms of an activity at the safety committee. And in terms of progression with the new measures, I recommend that it is heading in the right direction as, as discussed. And getting them back in person later and maybe once we have seen the new folks in the full discussion. Are you going to change um, the date? Okay, thank you. So can we have the action register um, updated to the correct dates? Mark. Thank you, Chair. Nami here, Teata. Good morning, directors. Um, I'll touch on a few highlights from Shane's CE report. Um, uh, you've already touched on the PT recovery, which is certainly uh, taxing the executive as well. We have had significant um, conversations around that at the executive table. And only yesterday, Vanessa and Mark and myself have discussed how we may be able to set up, or we will be setting up a dedicated team cross-functionally, uh, and providing the appropriate skills to be able to put even more focus on this you're right. We haven't um, seen the we haven't seen the recovery that we were expecting. Um, we would have expected to be around 75 to 80 percent at this point. Um, we're sort of around 50 to 20 percent behind where we were expected to be. Um, some initiatives which are progressing along those lines um, include, um, in terms of conditions for drivers, and um, the team is pulling together within now the approved budget um, a proposal for operators to enhance. And the minimum wage rate for drivers, um, and that will hopefully be progressing through operators in the next few weeks. Um, in terms of the network, the network recast um, to reallocate services to appropriate parts of the network and enhance on the um, integrated connecting network which we put in place a couple of years ago is progressing. And to be fair, that is a little bit slower than perhaps we probably would have hoped, and um, because we do have to negotiate with operators, change schedules, etc. Um, but Riches, I think, went live a couple of weeks ago on their changes, but we're now working through with NZ Plus as well. Um, in terms of promotion and marketing, uh, again, one of the key tasks which this dedicated team will be asked to look at is how can we allocate more funding to that space in the short term? Um, as you pointed out, growing the revenue, it wouldn't take, um, we, we can invest a small amount of money which is already allocated in our budget and to be able to grow that revenue over the medium to long term. Um, the targets we're talking about by 1st of July 2023 would need to be around a, an exit um, or an entry run rate for patronage for FY24 for around 85 to 90 million passengers per year. So that's the target we'll be setting the team to grow to that point by the end of next financial year. Um, uh, to achieve the 82 million, we would need to be at that exit run rate for that year anyway. Uh, but that's still our goal as far as the executives are concerned. Um, like you say, community services card, um, we are having a soft launch as of next Monday, um, which includes um, starting to get um, 80 hot cards from the concession preloaded into people's hands um, and actually communicating and promoting that initiative. In terms of just uh, a couple of other highlights on the, um, the business report, um, I'd like to um, jump to page 23 of all books. Um, we welcome for the first time face-to-face -face our 2022 Kaihoa graduate intake. 
and that's the first time they've all come together as, as a group, which was nice, um, following an extensive online um, induction and, and welcome and onboarding experience with AT. Um, page 31, um, a communicate a marketing comms campaign is underway um, for phase two speed changes, um, which will be um, delivered between 30th of June and 14th of July. That would include a media release, which I've seen is going out today as well, and the finance of that. Um, page 32, board book, the initial value safety improvements. Um, I personally visited the site a couple of weeks ago, and well-managed site, works progressing, um, and the works will be completed relatively shortly. And haven't heard a lot of uh, negative feedback, and given the amount of consultation which occurred with the community prior to the works, um, despite a lot of disruption, to be fair, um, on the road space, they've actually delivered the works themselves. Um, and finally, I'd just like to highlight on page 44 of Bullet Books, um, we've completed and opened in the last four to six weeks a number of cycleway improvements across the network. Uh, Newlands Avondale cycleway was, was opened by the Mayor and the Minister. Um, stage 2 Gianni Tamaki, who are by Waka Kotahi, um, again opened by the Mayor and Minister. Um, and we have also awarded construction contracts for stages 4A and 4C for Gianni Tamaki. Um, and formally opened, although it was operational prior to Christmas, and uh, Tamaki Drive cycleway as well. So in the last uh, six weeks, some significant uh, delivery in that space. Uh, I'd like to open to questions, Chair, and um, hope the team can ask. Thank, thank you, Mark. Okay, directors. Um, thank you very much, Mark. I just wanted to acknowledge our ATOC employee. Um, just try to find it. Um, with the Health and Safety Representatives Awards, I thought that was fantastic. Um, just moving on to the conversation that our chair raised um, earlier, it's good to see that on page 43 of Board Work Books, which is 22 of the report, um, managing planned events and just thinking about events and how we manage block of lines. Just wondered if we are looking in terms of patronage rebuild at um, high spikes pre-COVID. Um, I guess it was quite glaring to me that we missed an opportunity a couple of weekends ago where you have you might have different events that aren't necessarily ticketed, but things like traditional rugby matches between secondary schools, where you could get ten thousand there, or keen to catch a train, um, we're close. So I just thought um, sometimes there are opportunities where people who may not necessarily use public transport to nudge them into it. So I just wonder that even um, Pacifica festivals, where they're not ticketed events, but there are spikes, so I just wondered if we could think slightly differently um, in terms of trying to capture those audiences. You might already. I just, I, it just was obvious to me. One other question, um, and Adrian's already raised it. The, it was excellent to see the train managers support when the incident that Adrian just um, referred to came and supported over the next few days and volunteered. That was sensational. How are we working, just given the escalation of violence in the city, how are we working with our other support services like police and other um, organisations um, around continuing to be a, provide a safer working environment as we possibly can? Thanks for the questions. Um, in terms of events, short answer is yes, we do do that. Can we do more? Yes, we probably can. And we've got the results of the data probably enhanced um, promotional marketing of services over the next few months as well. Um, the major events such as the um, international or the blues type of the We've always used that as a key to try and get public, public transport in the base of non-users um, and actually get them to trial it and experience it. And I think we've been really successful over the years yeah. and we've seen the uh, utilisation of those services go from almost zero to 50 or 60 percent. Um, the real challenge now we've also got, which we saw the last um, at the Super Rugby final, 
um, is the Kiwi Rail uh, works on the rail network. We're having to close part of those networks for the renewables and safety improvements. Um, and we're doing our absolute best to try and cover that with bus services. A bus services as attractive as rail services to those types of events for some of the non users tonight. So we've got that challenge as well to try and do. Um, in terms of um, the train managers, you, you, the, sorry, the transport officers, yeah, fantastic response coming in on rostered days off to help out. Really fantastic. Um, perhaps Andrea will just ask whether there's anything else we're doing with regards to other services. Um, through the chair, I don't think there's anything else we're doing with respect to other services. Obviously, with that incident, there was a desire to ensure a visible presence on the network, and, and many of those officers, as the report actually articulates, volunteered to come in and work on days they weren't rostered on. That's the sort of people that we've got in that team. It's fantastic. Um, we have been working closely with police to try and understand. Yeah, so so we do we. We work very closely with police around intelligence, the intelligence that they hold on the network and the information that we have for the network to arrive at um, decisions with respect to deployment and where we deploy people on the network. Um, I can't share with you anything more specific than that. Fine. Thank you. I could perhaps add on to that too. And so what we're looking to do is put some level of KPI with police about public transport representation. Yeah. Ideally, because they don't, we don't see them across the network, it's just their presence. So when we talk about our engagement with police, it's about creating it to be more holistically. So we've got those touch points, which I think is going to be really important for patronage recovery mm -hmm. too. Yes. Yeah. So that is the goal with that. Also trying to get improved reporting. So we've got early identification of issues. So we've been working with Andrew's team, and so your team, in terms of what we can do with crime stoppers to help bus drivers as well, to be able to provide really quick, easy way of reporting things. So we get a quicker response and we build a profile because we don't have that profile in terms of where these things are occurring right now. So it's a complex piece of work. I did meet with ALR MD the other day about that. They really seek more engagement. And so we're going to create more of a senior forum to be able to have those conversations, particularly about threats and aggression. Because you'll see that coming through on reporting right now. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mark. To, um, comment with there's a discussion later just about Auckland's transport's ability to kind of communicate with the community better. Um, when I read through this report, when you start putting all of our delivery pieces in one place, it's actually a lot being achieved. And I just don't think we're telling that story very well. You know, 37 pedestrian improvement schemes, five motorcycle improvement schemes, another 40 under construction, we're delivering safety improvements and different town centres or intersections, intersections yeah. dealt with seven yeah. of those intersections. You put it all together, it's a phenomenal delivery schedule. And I just, we need to be better at telling the story. It's, it's nice having it in one place. No, no, I, I, through the chair, I completely agree. Um, we're looking at um, parachuting some of the, um, uh, with the chair support uh, to cover what is um, replacement in the short term, and that will be highly focused on external problems and communication. Um, I just had, um, Adrian, can I just add something to that? Sure. I mean, obviously, the media is not interested in the positive news stories. Um, we've been doing a whole campaign on, you know, actually advising the media on all the projects we've been delivering, um, and it hasn't been reported. So I just want to acknowledge the efforts of the team that probably are going there and there's just really no interest in media and positive news stories, particularly as it relates to transport and particularly in Auckland, I would say. Um, but I would say on the other side of that, so we've been quite proactive and maybe just, um, we've just launched a new tool on our maintenance, which shows um, in a national level what maintenance we delivered over the last summer and you can see it on the map and you can see the number of projects and it's quite visual. So I just, um, there's an opportunity there to do something similar in Auckland, I think. So maybe just to talk to our team, and that's been picked up in quite a few places because it's a simple um, infographic. Yeah. Um, and Kotahi has been known from time to time to um, actually, you know, pay for um, advertorial, um, in other words, editorial that they pay for. Um, just actually talking about what you know what is going on, and that is a course of the digital world. Um, some of those things you can get onto mainstream media um, and tell the story another way. I've got another one coming out on road safety, a simple coming out. Uh, we're just at, um, 
OIA on it um, to look at the cost of us producing that editorial. So we'll probably get a new story on us back on that rather than trying to We get them too. Um, um, but um, but I the call. idea is to yeah. inform the public in more simple ways about the work that we're doing in safety and life support. Yeah. So it's just I, I just want to endorse that at the moment there's just no appetite in the media for the positive news stories and transport that I only want to hear. So they have to find a way, whether it's editorial or social media, or to it, or even ways, whether it's find a way. Yeah. And also, we need to get the pulse from the other, because what you see is in what's in the mainstream media, which is not actually where a lot of media is now happening. So, yeah. how do we get the insight from the other things as well? Thank you. Um, so, look, I just wanted to, uh, and you, you may not have the answer um, today. So, it was wonderful to see the um, Avondale to Newland. Um, uh, pathway, which is you know, cycleway, opened, and I've seen in the social media a lot of really positive uh, comment commentary about it. Um, can you just let me know? Have we uh, carried out a safety audit to make sure that the road crossings um, are actually at the required standard, and do we have any you know, any ongoing work in that territory? Because as it gets more and more popular, um, obviously those issues uh, become of more significance. I can come back more formally, but yes, we have. Um, uh, there was a, a post construction delivery safety audit undertaken. Um, yes, they're, they're not segregated crossings, um, but they, through that audit, they have been deemed to be a safe solution. There were some improvements which were identified through that process. Um, which either have or very shortly will be implemented either at the intersection or further down the road to improve sight lines, for example, and things like that. So, yes, yes, we have. So, we've carried out an audit uh, and have identified a number of improvement actions. Correct. Okay. Um, okay, I, better, I just want to close out and make sure there aren't any other questions. Thank you. Um, thank you, Shane. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, Mark. Kira, I think Wayne's hand is up. Oh, sorry. Wayne. Sorry, yeah, just very quickly, um, just noting the report on um, Active Modes program. I think given uh, what's in front of us in terms of emission reduction and what we're going to have to do over the next decade, it would be good to get a sense of how far we would have to scale up this kind of activity given the sort of forecast that we're looking at and also get some indication of what what results from this program, how many more people actually cycle. Because I think we're going to need that kind of stuff to sort of um, put meaningful programs in place at scale in the future. Yeah, yeah there are going to be a very sh small number of um, indicators, public transport boardings, and uh, and basically a number of people are walking and cycling and there are going to be a small number of indicators uh, that are going to be a huge focus of the organisation. Which takes us uh, nicely into the next um, agenda item, uh, which is the statement of intent. Um, so over to you, Jenny. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so we have um, Hamish Ryan and Tim Brown on the call who've been doing the bulk of the work with um, Mark's team as well on the statement of intent. So this is the last stage almost in finalising this. Um, we've brought this to you before. This is the version that has um, the feedback um, responded to from the Council uh, and a few other things worked through over the last couple of weeks in tune as well in response to various questions from board members. Hamish, do you want to mm. overview and then we can take questions? Yes. Thank you. So the main feedback from the uh, Council CCO committee. Um, we could have you sort of ads here, but I don't think you're planning to talk yet, were you? No, I was, I was just going to listen. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, sorry. Uh, the main feedback was around uh, a desire to uh, better reflect the, the uh, transport emissions reduction plan, uh, which will be due for approval later this year, uh, reflecting the emissions reduction plan from central government, uh, inclusion of uh, key performance indicators related to Māori outcomes, and a request to separate out the uh, the first year work program 
from the, um, the, the full three year work program. So there's better clarity in that space. Um, and so those things have been taken through as far as possible. Um, I think as we briefed to an earlier board, one of the challenges with the, the TERP is it's not yet complete. So it's been difficult to reflect all of that there, but we have certainly included in the work program and in the in the uh, detail um, aspects of the early interventions around TERP that were requested by the Council's uh, Climate Change Committee. Uh, we've got public transport, ongoing public transport and recovery targets. Um, we're initiating a um, implementation plan from the TERP and that's covered. Um, and then we'll be introducing a new measure into the SOI. Now that's not turned into a target at this point and that'll be around uh, extended fuel sales. We need to do some more work uh, to bottom out uh, the specifics of that, particularly before we turn it into a target, but you'll see that starting to come through in the indicators report uh, going forward. Uh, also in response, we've added two new um, Māori related KPI, that's the number of regional buses with bilingual announcements. You, you'll be aware that we have an ongoing program in that area. Um, and the number of mana whenua who we held. We'll also be working on a target around the incorporation of, uh, sorry, not the incorporation, a, a target around um, uh, procurement uh, and the, the proportion of work um, done by Māori uh, owned businesses as part of our overall procurement program. Um, there have been some changes also as part of this, we have updated the uh, the document and the targets to reflect um, changes since the, the last draft, including the revised uh, capital program that we've uh, briefed you in, early, in previous meetings. Um, so there have been some changes to the targets that are included in there. The sealed road, a uh, proportion of sealed road that we're expecting to be resurfaced has been revised downwards as a result of financial constraints. Um, public transport boardings and fare recovery have been revised downwards uh, as a result of greater uncertainty around COVID recovery. Um, we've increased the number of buses expected to be low emissions, uh, reflecting expectations around better progress there, and the same with a percentage of ANT streetlights. Um, we've also um, modified the target uh, compared to the last draft, modified the target around cycling um, to correct an error. Uh, you may recall from the previous SOI that that uh, the uh, cycle, uh, sorry, kilometres of cycleways delivered uh, was changed to a three year target. Um, and we didn't actually flow that through into the into the draft SOI. So we've now changed it back to the three year target. However, happily, we are um, expecting a higher delivery than that target. So although we've kept the target the same as the three year target that's in the long term plan, we are signaling expectations of higher delivery. So those are the main changes. So that was rather a lengthy summary. So those are the main changes uh, in terms of the last draft a series of tidy ups and, and various other things. And of course, we captured the first year program as opposed to the, um, the three year elements in that program. Okay. Um, uh, now, Abby, I know that I think you and Warren um, have had a, a particularly strong engagement with this. Um, Mark, and, Mark and I. Sorry, uh, Mark and Abby. Um, could I? Could I um, invite you to make any comments. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, so I think it, it's worth noting that the SOI in its current form is, is substantially different, I think, from the form of the SOI last year, and a lot of that is a result of feedback. So really pleased to see um, a lot of the changes that we in the subgroup recommended coming through, and I think it makes for a much stronger document. So um, well done to the team on making those changes. Thank you. Um, Really pleased as well to see us getting in a, a target for emissions across the network, which I know is difficult. And in the conversation we had in our last discussion about this was kind of the need for us to do this because, you know, the expectation from our owner is, is significantly heightened. Um, I think a really good move to use um, diesel and petrol stale sales as a proxy, that that is the proximate cause for, you know, the, um, as 
um, Adrian describes it, the fossilization or the defossilization of our atmosphere. So I think that's a really useful measure to be tracking. Um, absolutely acknowledge that a lot of that is not in our gift. Um, I guess the question for you, Hamish, is just based on what you were saying, is your expectation that there's just more work to do and that will include sort of some expected either increase or decrease. And I, you know, I think the conversation we've had previously is that the number probably goes up before it goes down um, over the next three years to include in the kind of final version of this that will go to the council. I can see you nodding, Jenny, so maybe you don't need to answer that, Hamish. But yeah, I, I you know. I guess from my point of view, we kind of endorsed this to other directors, I think, and the team have done really good work and we've used a much more sort of extended and deeper process this year round. Yeah. Um, I do think I need to clarify that we're not anticipating including it as a specific target in this SOI, unfortunately, because we're not quite ready. Um, the work to do is, as you said, uh, getting a better handle on what we think the, the likely trend is and then what effect our program is going to be in terms of that shorter term period um, over the period 2021 to 30. So we will be measuring it. Yeah, we'll certainly be measuring and it, reporting it and reporting it. But unfortunately, we're just not quite in a position to give you it as a target. Um, but certainly we want to elevate it, um, as you say, I think it, it Completely agree. It's the right measure because it's the most proximate cause of the challenges that we have. Do you chair the um, carbon emissions um, to response plan work will look at um, where we start putting the targets in place? Um, but again, as Hamish said, not probably for the next four years. Um, okay. Um, um, Mark, do you have any other comments to make? Not, not too much to add. I just I just thought the it's a work in progress and it's, it's improving all the time. I think having the mayor's letter in there is a, because this is responding to that. I think it's really valuable um, thing to do. And the other thing we've got to just be careful is that a lot of our targets are out to 2030, 2031. And this is dealing with three years. We just have to keep that link going. And the question when I reread the document again, the question that keeps coming back to my mind is, does, is that enough to get us to where we want to go in 2030? So we can't lose sight. Well, that's a three year document. Can't lose sight of the ten-year targets. Thank you. Uh, so just just on the back of the um, uh, starting to put in put in place the um, uh, measure of fossil fuel actually uh, purchased in the region. Um, we're lucky we've got a regional fuel tax system that you know, enables or basically supports all this. Um, being tracked. Um, so um, I just wanted to also understand, um, I, I, I saw a comment that um, there is no single um, data source for vehicle kilometres travelled. So we can, obviously it depends a lot on fleet mix and motive power, which over time will become increasingly electric. But at this stage it does again um, in the same way as um, um, the fuel concerned does actually provide um, a, a, a where are we today. Um, so I just wanted to um, understand, so we've got Nicole here, is this the sort of thing that Kotahi is collecting for its state highway and motorway um, part of the Auckland region? Um, do we have any proxies for vehicle kilometres travelled, which is a bit more um, you know, not once every two years and just a result of modelling. Yeah, we re reset our um, outcome measures last year as we did to Kapahu, our strategic direction, and we took them from about 50 down to 20, one of which is VKT. But there's 20 other, um, and we've actually now produced a tool where we are measuring VKT um, for New Zealand, uh, and we are doing sub levels of that at the moment. So, so I just asked the question as to whether we can go down to state highway level, which I think we probably can. But we've done a lot of work on a national VKT measure. Well, first of all, simplifying measures to both your point, Mark, system. Uh, what are we responsible for is what we're taking underneath that and then operational delivery. Um, and uh, we, have, we have a tool now where you can see it um, being developed in real time, how we're performing against those measures at a system next level down. Um, so VKT is one of those, and that's also part of the tool we're trying to develop for councils 
um, to allow you to look at trade-off choices. So the poor wins and tool that we've now taken that and we're developing that um, much more comprehensively to allow councils to um, use that as the basis for making trade-off choices in, um, around urban planning. Now that, as I understand it, it will be coming out in the next month or so to support um, discussions with councils about how they make their choices. You've asked a very specific question about state highways. There are assumptive models. So um, part of the issue here is we need MIT to agree some of the assumptions for us to then put them into the models, but we've absolutely been looking at building models. So perhaps over the next yeah. 12 months or so, we so may just be keep close to yeah. it. Yeah. It's so, and our team. Yeah. So in terms of uh, VKT, there are existing sources so there's the ministry's overall, sorry, I'm going to go technical for a second here. The ministry provides um, total data based on odometer readings, and they do have it for Auckland. It happens to lag by a year. Sure, that's the point yeah. about yeah. these much more real time. Yes. Um, and the other difficulty with it, it includes for Auckland, it's affected by the fact that Traditionally, there's been quite a large car hire fleet, which is likely doing its case outside of Auckland. So part of the work that I think we need to do is engage with the Ministry in Waka Kotahi to see if we can clean that data to remove some of those anomalous fleets. The other data is um, uh, State Highway VKT for Auckland and our local road VKT for Auckland. Unfortunately, um, not all of the data are telling a the same story. So we, as I say, we've got some work to do to get those to understand why they're not online. Sure, but I mean, so we would expect that probably within uh, 12 months, we will actually be able to develop at least um, a proxy Absolutely. for VKT. Absolutely. Um, and so that we don't have to wait 12 months to see if any of the interventions um, are effective or not. You mentioned the EVs just a, as a lead indicator. Um, and lots made that the EV revolution is quite slow because only one percent of the cars are going to EV. Literally, um, presentation of the day by New Zealand's largest lease company, those corporate leases. Their order is now uh, 50 percent electric. And 40 to 50 percent of the cars bought in the, in the last year in New Zealand are electric. So the whole thing's flipping. So we're accelerating quickly. much faster than anywhere else in the world at the moment. Yeah. So what we can do is, if you'd like, add that data into the monitoring report as well. Yes, that would be great. So we do report that data month, well, actually weekly, but monthly to the minister, and that data is available, and new car purchases are flipping, absolutely, um, which does have quite big financial implications, I might think. Yes, <laughs> that the funding review may be becoming um, more urgent. <laughs> Um, right, so look, we've got, um, uh, thank you for all the work that's been yeah. done. Uh, thank you to the uh, to the directors who have had a particular focus on this. Uh, we've got a recommendation that we approve the statement of intent and we uh, delegate to the interim chief executive any minor amendments. Um, is that agreed by the board? Yes. Yes, can I have a, I think I've got um, Jim moving that, uh, Abby seconding it. Um, uh, I just see that Wayne Wayne has his hand up, Adrian. So. Sorry, Wayne. Just just before I put that, uh, Wayne, did you have a comment to make? Yeah, just a minor one, just on section one point three, which just talks about how we do things, etc. I just thought the um, section on enabling and enhancing our culture and capability is a little bit narrow and a little bit um, historic rather than forward looking. So I just wonder if the team would have a quick look at that. It's, not a major, it's not something we get measured for, but it's, I don't think we're doing ourselves justice there. Well, that might be one of those uh, amendments, the interim chief figure of might. Yeah, I'm sure it can be, yes. Yeah. Okay, so with that comment, uh, that's approved by the board? Yes. Yes. Uh, now let's move on to the monthly transit board indicators. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, this. Oh, do you want to go first? Yeah, no, go. Okay. 
Um, so this is the April 2022 monthly indicators report. So um, just a few comments on it before you guys ask questions. Um, April was the first month of the half price fares. So we did see a 3.8% increase in monthly patronage, which wasn't as high as we were hoping, but April's also school holidays, Easter and Anzac. So generally the travel patterns aren't as typical. And I did look back in the last like 10 years of monthly patronage and it is like, it goes down for, or like well, a little bit down for April and then back up for May. So that's quite normal. Um, in terms of less than serious injuries, um, on the local road network, we're tracking to uh, meet our reduction target, which is really good. Um, on all roads, including the motorways, um, we're close, but not not as close as on the local road network. And then with the program delivery, um, so for cycleways and resurfacing the sealed local road network, we're also a little bit behind, um, just mostly because of the lockdowns last year, and then the ongoing impacts of you know COVID sicknesses and flu and stuff. So yeah, um, but yeah, that's. Does anyone have any questions or? <laughs> Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Is, is there any sensitivity around um, reliability of services versus um, the PT fear? Because my understanding, and this is a global phenomenon, is frequency of services and reliability is a far bigger indicator of um, PT uptake than fear, um, fear, although the fears are, are an added incentive if you don't have reliable. So in April, where our fears as reliable or more reliable than the previous month, or did we have a degradation of our fears over um, our service reliability over that period? I can go. I think Mark could probably pick that one up. Thanks, Gary. Um, for the chair, so correct. Um, frequency is, is normally regarded as one of the biggest patronage growth um, indicators for PT. And price elasticity of the fares is about 0.3, which normally means that if you increase fares or reduce fares by 50%, so you'd be expected to see around a 15.5% change. Um, and that's an international um, indicator. We've seen um, actually less elasticity than that over the last few years since we've had 80 hop in place, because it's not real cash, it's, it's actually less transparent to customers when the price changes. Um, and that was some of the advice we did give to the Ministry of Transport at the time, uh, but actually, Yes, fair reduction is a good thing, um, particularly when we're trying to PT, but it's not necessarily the silver bullet, and we should be looking at frequency increases in particular moving forward. Thank you. Just to follow up question on that, wondering whether we've done any sub analysis on different groups. Like we know there may be a group of Aucklanders who are more sensitive to price, and I know early on in the half price fears, the Minister you'd showed that. In South Auckland, maybe there was a bigger increase in the number of people buying AT hot card that we yeah. thought maybe we might be able to track whether there is a group who are more price sensitive and whether we can do that, particularly when the community connect trial staff. Yeah. Have we had any more information on that? Um, our market insights team are rerunning that right now, so we haven't done yet. I can also say something on that. So we're doing some work now for the new regional public transport plan. Mm -hmm. And so as part of that, we're looking at who are our customers at, as the request for the board last time. And we'll be coming back to you in the August board to have a discussion on that. We've started looking at it in terms of different customer groupings and things like that. And we found that there's actually an awful lot of similarity um, in terms of usage of PT amongst things like location, ethnicity, things like that. Mm -hmm. The key differentiator is age. Um, mm -hmm. and, but the age profile is the same um, amongst things like ethnicity and location as well. So it's a really interesting set of factors, but we'll have a bigger discussion on that in the August meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions on the uh, monthly bill? Okay, uh, so the, um, the board will receive that report. Thank you very much.
Um, is there any panel that's not so? Uh, very good. We will um, so that will close uh, the open session of um, the Auckland Transport Board for June.